If you think anime is nothing but this, or this, or this, or this, I'm here to tell you that you're almost right! Okay, in all seriousness, when people say they don't like anime, I tell them, that's okay. You just haven't found the right one. Anime is a bigger medium than you think. For example, did you know there was another Oscar-winning anime besides Spirited Away? Yep, it's this one right here. House of Small Cubes, 20 minutes, it's on YouTube, it's terrific. Probably make you choke up harder than the first five minutes of Up. Yeah, anime can look like this. It's Teen Titans in anime! Well, no- How could this happen to me? Oh, okay. We're opening- we're opening that can of worms r real quick. Okay. Yeah, this is an ongoing debate in our community because we have nothing better to argue about. My answer to that is, who cares if it's anime so long as you're liking it? But what I would say is, while it's cool to enjoy Teen Titans, or Avatar The Last Airbender, or Samurai Jack, those are shows in your comfort zone. You grew up with those shows, right? Or maybe you grew up with Dragon Ball Z, or Naruto, or Cowboy Bebop. That's totally cool. And those shows are fine to recommend. Hell, Bebop is in my top 10 favorites. But this is about expanding your horizons to types of content that aren't just presented right in front of you like Netflix originals. No, watching anime is a hunt, a conquest, a thirst for adventure, to meet new characters and worlds in all sorts of different art styles. Sure, you can get all that by just watching One Piece, but again, this is about the shows you've never even heard about. But you gotta know where to start. If you wish to explore the anime landscape proper, the two sites I recommend firstly are Kitsu or My Anime List, or Mal for short. These are anime databases that you don't watch anime on, but rather keep records of shows you've seen, currently seeing, or plan to see. This is the main functionality for both, and it's kind of the difference between Pepsi and Coke. I like Kitsu for how attractive its interface is and for being a more social media platform, but Mal has more statistics, been around longer, and has more users. Tomatoes, tomatoes. Using one of these is the first and quickest way to get into anime, because it incentivizes you to find more shows and complete them. I'm at about 350 completed anime, and happy to say that I still haven't gotten around to all the good stuff yet. My plan to watch is over 500 titles long. In other words, you aren't going to be left with the question, what should I watch? Because there's always the next one to give the old college try. But that still leaves the question of where to start if all you've seen are Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, or Studio Ghibli. Well, hold on a minute, let's just start right there. Hey, I'd suggest making a Mal or a Kitsu and put all the shows that interest you here on your list because the recommendations are going to start flying in. There's a high chance you've seen a Studio Ghibli film, but there's even higher chance that you haven't seen all of them. And I mean like all of them, not just Hayao Miyazaki's work. Though if you were interested in Miyazaki himself, did you know he directed a TV anime? Future Boy Conan, 1978. Look too old for you? Well, here's another one he directed that's a bit newer looking. Well, still too old? Okay, well, ever hear of Anne of Green Gables? Yeah, there's an anime for it, and you'll never believe it, but it's actually one of the best anime of the 1970s that he and close friend Isao Takahata both worked on. What, still too old looking? Well, I'm sorry to say this, but your adventure is going to be severely narrowed if you limit yourself based on how something looks. Didn't anyone tell you not to judge by appearances? Would you skip out on this show based on how different the designs are? You realize you're going to be missing out on one of the best gambling thrillers, not just an anime, but ever, right? If you just say no, no, no all the time, how are you ever going to get out of your comfort zone? There's loads of good stuff from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and I think once you come to like the aesthetic, you're going to have so much fun. Again, it's all about finding the right one. But back to Miyazaki for a bit, looking up what anime he was involved with, and not just what films he directed on Wikipedia, is a great way to filter out what you should watch if you enjoyed one of his works. This goes into the second big way to get into anime, knowing the people who make it. Listing off well-known Hollywood directors like Spielberg, Scorsese, Kubrick, Tarantino. If you start out with films by these directors, it's a great start at getting more serious into film, right? Anime is much the same way with its superstar creators. If you liked Cowboy Bebop, check out the director Shinichiro Watanabe's other works. If you liked Ghost in the Shell, check out Mamoru Oshii's other animated films. And here are some other major names that, if you liked one of their works, you have incentive to watch their other works. <laughs>
course, going by just the people only nets you so much. Similar to how there's a Studio Ghibli, the third trick is to looking into animation studios. Most of these production studios have crafted an identity for themselves, with often making shows similar in style. So if you like what you're seeing here, then you'll likely be fond of Studio Trigger's other work. I know Gordon Log in a Studio Gynax, okay? Shh. Here's some studios that are worth checking their portfolios if you like one of their works. <laughs> Continuing our tour down the rabbit hole, these are Japanese terms for demographics, which is the category of people a particular show is meant for, but of course, any audience can enjoy them. They're just there to let you know what to expect. If you've ever heard the word shonen, it's Japanese for young men, so oriented to pre-teens and young adult males. These are shows that have a lot of action, memorable characters, and almost always very long running, almost like ongoing serials. These are some of the most notable or popular shows in the medium. The other popular demographic is shoho, which is Japanese for young girl. So this is mostly populated by teen romances or adventure fantasies, and are often more comedic, grounded, and digestible for a mainstream audience. Then there's the edgier seinen demographic targeted for adult men. You'd think these shows are the most experimental, dark, sometimes more thought-provoking titles, but this is very often not the case. Seinen is honestly the least definable demographic graphic of the four, I don't even want to try to define it. Last is the Jose category, which are oriented for adult women, and it's the rarest demographic of the four. These have a stronger focus on atmosphere and matured characters, with adult themes that are not extreme or abstract, but still morally complicated, while also being more comfy to watch. Now, obviously these descriptions don't completely represent the titles in some of these demographics, and there's still plenty of shows that don't fall into any of these four categories. I talk about these demographics similar to how we perceive genre. So when I call a show a traditional shonen, people generally know what I mean and what to expect from it. Not everybody in the community agrees with this, so I'm sure I'm going to hear a lot of dissension about it in the comments, but speaking of genres, that's another great way to look for the right show. Granted, it shouldn't need much explanation since most anime genres exist in other mediums, but there are a few that don't, or at least rarely do. If there's one thing anime is known for, it's the mecha genre and maho shoujo or magical girl genre, and each of these have titles ranging all across the board. The sports genre is a whole branch in the medium. Basketball, baseball, soccer, tennis, ping pong, boxing, a lot of stuff. A lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. As well as the school genre, which more has to do with how many anime have schools as their settings. We have so much romance anime that we have to break it down into sub-genres, such as the ever-prevalent harem genre, where there's one guy and a huge supporting female cast, or the reverse, as well as the shoho ai slash yuri and shonen ai slash yaoi genres, which are Japanese for female and male homosexual relationships. Anyway, one thing I really like about anime is how it's formatted. When people ask me how long each episode of an anime is, it reminds me that most TV shows nowadays are over 40 minutes, which is almost double the length of a typical anime episode. If anything, I think it's an encouraging aspect. A short 12 episode show takes about 4 hours, or the length of watching two movies. And binging a 24 episode series can take just about the length of a day. When you look at it this way, 50 or 100 episode shows aren't as intimidating. Game of Thrones is currently 63 episodes, and each episode is about an hour long. So it's effectively the length of a nearly 200 episode anime. And it doesn't stop there. There are a heap of even shorter short shows. Shorter, short. Yeah. Shows that are even less than 20 minutes an episode. Here's a few of those that I really enjoy. <laughs> to let TV shows be your only gateway. Like we've already seen with Studio Ghibli, anime films are a great way to sample what you might like. Here's a couple I haven't even mentioned yet! <laughs> Of 
course, anime are not just TV shows and movies. Well, most are. But some aren't. These are original video animations, or OVAs, which are movies or series that were only released physically, so not in theaters or on TV. So they're a lot more niche and experimental. Sometimes there are OVAs attached to a TV series, like extra side episodes released after the show's runtime. A variation of the OVA is the ONA, which are not released physically or on TV and theaters, but exclusively online instead, possibly appearing on physical media later on. Here are some notable ones to check out. <laughs> Now that we've looked into people, studios, demographics, genres, and even release formats, another factor that's key to finding the anime you like is the period in which it's made. Anime is an evolving medium, with trends that come and go all the time, so certain years or periods of time have notable aesthetics or similar kinds of content. You can tell what decade almost every anime was made in based on how they look. For example, the 1970s are super gritty because they weren't as concerned about motion in those days, so there was a mix of super robot shows and masterpiece theater shows, which were anime like Heidi or Nobody's Boy Remy that were based on western literature. The 1980s were obsessed with sci-fi and saw the rise of the OVA, which led to anime content pushing the envelope even further. The 1990s had the most strings of long-running shonen and shoho anime, so there's a lot of long-running shows from this period. The aesthetic also got to be sharper and more exaggerated, and started implementing digital effects along with the hand-painted cell animation. The 2000s was the period when anime was converted to digital animation, and so not only were we starting to get more visually ambitious projects, but it was also a period where long-running content was at its peak, the majority being at least 26 episodes long. And then there's anime today, where technology has grown even farther and animation more expressive, and so far has put more emphasis on shows about 12 or 13 episodes, which is even more digestible for a binge-oriented audience. Which I guess brings us to the last big way to get into anime, seasonal anime. Okay, so... Instead of having access only to shows that are brought overseas months or years after they were released, which is how life was for an anime fan back in the 90s and 2000s, today we are watching brand new shows as they are airing weekly on TV in Japan. Every three months is a new cycle or season of anime, most of which being 12 or so episodes, and there's at least 20 shows every season. And while many of these shows usually become flavor of the week titles that won't be talked about after the season is over, at the time at the time of airing, most shows have an active community talking about the latest episodes, much like the latest Walking Dead or Rick and Morty episode. Plus, being there to see the potential big hits shape the future of the industry to come, for better or worse, is more than worth the price of admission. But even all these ways to compartmentalize or navigate, it's not enough to get the best representation of anime. Remember when I talked about how most people generalize anime about only being about sex or violence or being in high schools? Sure. This is a great deal of those anime out there, and to be fair, there's a very good number of those shows that are honestly worth the watch for those elements. But that's just not all it has to offer. One of the weirdest experiences I had recently was at this conference. It was filled with strangers, and circumstances of the conference were challenging me to talk about anime, which I had a fear of being judged for at the time, because I thought most people had this preconception of anime. When I got up the courage to talk to people about it, I was surprised to hear that they didn't even know what anime was. No Ghibli. No DBZ. No hentai. Nothing. Complete blank slate. And I began to describe to them a show about a neurosurgeon who is sick of hospital politics, and in choosing to save a little boy instead of an important political figure, he loses his status and fiance, only to discover a few years later that the boy grows up to be, well, spoilers. If this sounds like a show that could be on primetime TV, I wouldn't blame you. But that's why I'm watching anime. They can take a setting with giant robots and turn it into a drama about the romanticizing 
futility, and fog of war. Take your pick. It doesn't matter whether Teen Titans is anime or not. What's important is that Japan is making shows about Rakugo. Boxing. Making bread. It's making shows that range from politics to parodies. Serious or absurd. Adolescent or adult. Anime may seem to be aimed at kids or teenagers, but sometimes even these shows can defy your expectations and be something powerful or just downright entertaining or endearing. I really can't do all the heavy lifting for you. This video can only last so reasonably long and I've already recommended ah, that much. All I really recommend is a Kitsu or Mao to start hunting for the titles that are going to turn you into an anime fan. One last thing I should probably mention is how exactly you're expected to watch any of it. Gratefully, there's never been a better time to be an anime fan. Companies like Crunchyroll, Funimation, Hulu, Netflix, and even Amazon's Strike Service are the right avenues to watch loads of anime legally. And speaking of Amazon, prices for DVDs of entire series have never been more affordable. So even going the route of buying the show itself is a way. Unfortunately, it's not a perfectly explorable medium yet. Not everything that's really worth watching is so easily available. Maybe the license was lost or expired and the series is out of print. Maybe none of these sites have it available to stream. Maybe the show was never even licensed at all. For as many shows that are available, there's just as many, if not way more, that are yet out of reach, legally speaking. This is the internet we're talking about, and for all the stigma and skepticism the anime fans can get, and often deserve, they're probably the most passionate community in any media. No other medium, books, movies, music, theater, is cataloged so thoroughly and accessibly that literally every anime that's ever been made from 1917 to 2017 can be uncovered. And it's just waiting for you to discover it. And I'm so glad you discovered me. Thank you for stopping by. For those who are newly interested in my own content, I've made the big decision to start up a Patreon. There's some cool stuff I have in the works for supporting me, including my own Discord server, podcasts, behind the scenes stuff, all sorts of things. So if you'd like to support me, even if it's just $1 a video, I'd be extremely grateful. Thank you again for stopping by.